I'm gonna cry. I think about all the memories. It kind of goes down from this. Up into this. That was the bane of my existence. Steve Carell. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the UK. Thank you. Uh, on, a, on a sunny day in London. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. It reminds me that impossible is, is just a word. Uh, so Gru is back with his minions. Yes. 12 years after the first time round, which yeah. seems insane when you say it out loud. What are your memories of that time? You know, coming up with the accent, seeing pictures oh, of little the yellow memories. men. The memories just come. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I think about all the memories of Gru and those minions. Um, Boy, well, my first memory was coming up with the, just the voice of Gru. And my kids were little. They were like four and seven years old. And I tried the voice out on them. And the one that made them laugh is the one that I used. So that was like my first, like really specific memory of doing this part. And then sharing it with them kind of through the years, like taking my little kids. They had a special premiere because our because where they went to school was in the you know Hollywood area, and one of the other parents in the class was an executive at, at Universal, so he had a special premiere for all the kids just in that class, for you know, for the 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 very first Despicable Me, and like I have these, I can I can chart their growth through all of these different. Despicable Me movies, kind of, you know, it's become a real family thing. Well, we've got five movies later, 12 years. Gru is back, and much in the realm of, I don't know, De Niro and the Irishman, you've been de-aged in this one, as young Gru takes yes. center stage. How was, how was the voice for this in comparison to the past? Like, were you gargling salt water for recovery at the end? Because the pitching yes. process must have been it, something to deal with. It, it's, high, it's definitely higher pitched. It's pitched and pinched at the same time because it, it kind of goes down from this up into this. And, uh, and it's more earnest. That, that's part of it too. It was not just the timber of the voice, but it's like it's, it's the overall earnestness of this kid who wants to be a part of something. He wants to get his name out there. He wants to be seen. You know, he's so full of energy. So I was trying to imbue it with some of that too. Speaking of wanting to be part of something, he, he does audition in the movie to be part of this this nefarious super group of, of super villains. I don't imagine, I mean, this is just me guessing, but I don't imagine it's something you would have to do as much of, certainly, anymore in your career as you used to. Do you ever, do you ever miss the auditioning process? Because it, it has a really bad rep. It's the worst. And I was, I was terrible at auditioning. I, it was... That was the bane of my existence, was trying to audition for stuff. Because you, I would get so in my head, and I think a lot of actors do this, you try to think like, what are they, what do they want? What do they want me to do? What do they want me to be? And the reality is they just want you to do whatever you do. And if it's the right one, then you get hired. I mean, you say you, say you hate the process, but there's, there's two clips in particular of you which kind of, a famous on YouTube of the auditions for Anchorman and for The Office. And you, you watch that back and you look like someone who's just very comfortable and having a great time. But Ugh. I guess that's acting. Oh, in a way. It's terrifying. Have you ever it's, watched them back? No. No. I, I think I'd, I think it would make me sick <laughs> to watch that back. No, it's, you know, and being on the other side, because, you know, as a producer on some movies, you sit in and you watch auditions or you read with people and your heart goes out to them and because you know what it feels like to be like you're they're going through all you've gone through all of those things that they're going through so it's uh you know you try to make it as comfortable and as gentle an experience as you can and talking about auditioning and the casting process one thing i love about like, animated movies is that the casting can be quite random. Mm -hmm. For instance, in this film, putting Steve Carell in a movie with like Dolph Lundgren and, and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, like, is, and Julie Andrews. And Julie Andrews. Is there, is there, if there's a bitter pill at all of a project like this, is it not being able to kind of play around with those characters on a soundstage in real life? I, it would be a dream to be able to. I don't know why they, they and I've never worked that way. I've never worked in a room with all the other voice actors. I don't know if it's a scheduling thing. Um, Alan Arkin, who's a friend, you know, and an idol of mine, 
it was one, he really wanted, like he said, do we get to work together? And I said, I hope so. I mean, that's, that's my plan. And we never did. We never got to actually be in the same room together. Um, but yeah, to be in a room with Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren, come on, that's, that would be, I've never met them. I mean, that'd be a career ending thing. It'd be like, well, there's no, there's no I, topping yeah, this anymore. Well, yeah, where do you go from there? Well, I think there's, there's plenty more legs in the Minions series yet. Yeah, there's more years left. You could do a live action version, come back to this, get you all like painted up in either yellow. That would be the strangest thing. That would be fantastic. Ever. At least do it for YouTube. Uh, Steve, it's been a pleasure, mate. Really Thanks. enjoyed it. Uh, enjoy the rest of this day in Thank England. You. I hope yeah. the weather holds out. Even get outside. For my sake, as much as yours. Get out there. I'm going to get outside right now. Thank you, man. Thanks.